What is up, you homos? Today we are casting yet another game of TA Escalation. Guys, I've got some replays. Uh, it's been a bit of a drought for Escalation uh, replays recently, so I've been casting other games, which, uh, you know, it sounds like you guys enjoy to some degree, but I do still want the focus on this channel to be Escalation. Uh, I think all the games in the TA universe uh, are really cool. Uh, except for zero K sorry guys but uh, in any case yeah it's uh it's exciting to be back I've got three games uh, on the slate for you guys I've got this game plus two other games that I'm gonna cast within the next few days so uh, expect a lot of content to come out and they are all 1v1s 1v1s are my favorite kind of game to cast and play I'm also probably gonna try to do some 1v1s um this week so those should be if any of those games are good i'll cast those or two or maybe i'll record them while playing we will see but let's get into this one guys uh we have here in the bottom right pulsar or pulsar the pink arm commander and in the top left we have lord vader the orange core commander Guys, I am sorry that uh, during the work week, I work three 12-hour shifts in a row. So uh, that's that's brutal. And uh, I'm for those three days, which is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, like uh, I'm it, work is life. That's all I really have time for and, or I'm sleeping. So, um, but when I'm not working, I will try to do as many casts as I can because... Uh, it is awesome to watch these games and cast these games. Uh, like I said before, I've got to get on Wotan to uh, set up another Escalation tournament. That would be a lot of fun to cast and uh, I'm sure watch for you guys. We definitely need to get something else like that in the, uh, in the works. But uh, like I said, guys, Hopefully I can get a lot of content out over the next couple days and maybe even some games of my own. And uh, things are looking good on the horizon here for TA. So stay tuned for more content. We have pink here with uh, quite a few little peewees. A lot of early aggression here, about five. And then orange with uh, three AKs. So... Pewees and AKs fairly evenly matched. Let's just speed up the clock here. Uh, now, Orange does have this Might, which we'll reclaim for him. That's the uh, that's the idea. That's the reason they make them. And Pink has his own little... I think it's a Flea that reclaims. So, both players just getting all that uh, juicy metal reclaim all over the map. And uh, Pink, he does take out Orange's <laughs> Orange's uh, little mite there. Uh, very that was a snipe if I've ever seen one. Very well done, which will now give Pink an advantage to uh, he can reclaim all this metal to his heart's desire. And uh, Orange doesn't even have something to reclaim the metal, so uh, Pink should get an early game advantage here, and we'll have to see what he wants to do with it. Uh, right now, we've just got uh, Peewees versus AKs. And uh, give me one second, guys. I'm going to turn up the sound. It is always difficult to get the sound levels correct. Here we go, a battle between AKs and Peewees here in the north part of the map. And uh, if Orange isn't careful, he might lose just another Might. That would be terrible. Losing a second one. But uh, these mites are quite sneaky and apparently they have great climbing ability. So uh, he will escape for now. But uh, yeah, Pink has just reclaimed so much more this game. After taking out that uh, early reclaim bot.
But let's see what the players are doing back in their base. Uh, Pink going for an early Geo. That's pretty pretty nice. Once he gets that, he shouldn't have energy problems for uh, quite a while. 300 energy. And uh, Pulsor also has a Warrior on the field. Now, Warriors are very strong against AKs. They are the kind of arm riot K-Bot. It's one way to think of them. They are definitely designed for more of a crowd control capacity. Uh, they're slow and they're kind of short ranged, but uh, my god, they do chunk swarms of cheap units like AKs. And uh, oh, orange moving in the bottom here. And uh, I don't think pink's ready for this. If he just takes this route, that could be pretty bad. There's no late. See, pink built some laser towers up here. And up here, but uh, Orange does find the one approach that has not been properly defended, and uh, he's probably going to lose this Geo. If uh, if Orange focus fires that, it should most certainly die. And uh, boom, <laughs> boom. But uh, in the meantime, Pink has a lot of Warriors now moving into Orange's base, and uh, as I said, Warriors, uh, kind of like T1.5, they're, they're the, like one of the strongest T1 units. Um, they're obviously slow. But uh, Vador, uh, Lord Vader, excuse me, he loves his Storms, and Storms are a good counter. They can not outrange these Warriors. Um, I feel like Storms have even been buffed in the 9.9 .9 series. Uh, maybe their range was reduced, but I think maybe their damage was increased. Don't quote me on that, but Storms are certainly strong, especially if, uh, if he can kite these Warriors. And like I said, Vader loves his Storms. I've played against him quite a few times. He always seems to go Storms. Um, and uh, he's also doing another attack here with... Uh, with AKs. But uh, I, d I do want to emphasize again how big taking out that Geothermal was. That was such a huge pickup uh, for Vader and uh, it will put him, it will definitely give him an, I mean already you can see he's got more energy. Uh, Pink had invested a lot of resources into that Geo and uh, he does take it out. So Great job by Orange, who is now leading on the energy economy. Um, precisely because he didn't build a Geo, he instead put those resources into more solar collectors. And uh, when Pink lost his Geo, Geos are of course very volatile, so when they explode, uh, they do take out a huge AoE. But um, in any case, like I said, Vader does love his Storm spam, and uh, it is very good, especially early on if you micro. The storms cannot range most T1 units and kite. They can kite most things as well with these walls of missiles that are very strong early on. Um, if you're coming from original TA, if this is like your first time watching the channel or first time watching an escalation game, storms, uh, they kind of wreck face. They're, they're, they're pretty strong. Um, they're, they're, they're hugely buffed over how they are in OTA. I mean, they've just been buffed in a lot of ways. Their missiles travel much faster. Uh, they do more damage. And uh, they're just extremely effective in general. And once you get enough of them, you kind of hit this critical mass that's difficult to even approach. So if Pink were to send all of his Peewees right at this moment to, uh, to kill those... Um, Lord Vader would just kite <laughs> the living hell out of him, which would be kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, we, we'll see that right now. I mean, Pink doesn't even want to engage because he knows that Vader will kite this. Now, one thing about using storms correctly is that you have to constantly be engaged with your micromanagement. Um, if you're going to use storms, you need to always be watching them because you have to... To use them correctly, you have to kind of kite away from your enemy. Uh, if you let your enemy get on top of the storms, 
uh, they will die pretty quickly. So it is a micromanagement heavy unit, or heavier unit. So uh, to use them effic efficiently, you really need to keep an eye on them at all times. And uh, But in the meantime, Pulsor uh, has built some bombers here. and uh, But Vader is now moving into the south with those storms. And Pink has almost no defense. Let's slow it down because there's about to be a lot happening, I think. Um, orange in the south, putting pressure on. Uh, pink building flashes, and flashes are really strong if they can get on top of the storms, but as I mentioned earlier, the storms can kite the flashes. But flashes are uh, fast, hence the name. So, uh, Vader might get surrounded here. He does get pretty close in, and I wonder if he saw those bombers. I don't think he has. So Vader probably has no idea that this bombing run is coming. And uh, depending on Pulsar's micro, uh, he could get a lot accomplished. I mean, this could be pretty devastating. We've already seen uh, in many casts how strong bombers can be. And uh, how game-winning bombers can be. Uh, Vader has a couple of pulverizers here, but uh, certainly not enough. For this kind of aerial raid, there are four bombers, and uh, Pulsor uh, microing his little heart out, very uh, decent line bombing here. He has used his commander to put up three towers immediately, and that will end that particular bombing run, but uh, I don't know, I, I, I don't know if that, it did accomplish some things, it took out uh, quite a few metal spots. Might have been worth it. At the very least, it's annoying for Orange to have to rebuild all those uh, metal uh, metal spots, uh, metal extractors. But I've talked about this in previous casts. One of the advantage uh, advantages of bombing of success or you know just bombing runs in general is uh, the psychological impact on your opponent because uh, you have to build anti-air then. Um, and you have to invest, you, you kind of make it so that your opponent has to invest into anti-air. Uh, because they know that the threat of another airstrike is always there. And, uh, sometimes that can be a huge resource sink, even if you never do another, uh, aerial attack. Just, uh, putting that threat onto your opponent is very, uh, can be game winning. The Vader now with MAKs in the front, and this is a nice combination. MAKs and Storms kind of cover each other's weaknesses. MAKs the equivalent to the Warrior, so uh, they're they're like tier 1.5. They're like a tanky riot K bot, and uh, they're shorter ranged, but they have more health than most T1 units and they do a lot of damage and in the background you have storms so the MAKs tank for the storms and then the storms can kind of stay in the back line and uh, push out that DPS it's, uh, it's a nice combination of units and uh, pink on a lot of stumpies here but the problem with this is that the stumpies have to get in range of the storms and uh, as I've already explained storms can just kite those stumpies even though the stumpies are faster, you do hit a critical mass of storms, after which point it becomes difficult to even uh, kite away. Um, it becomes difficult to even surround them because there's just so many. So uh, there's a few different ways to deal with that. You can go T2, obviously, that's one option. Uh, once, once the game hits T2, the whole dynamic changes. There's a lot of units that uh, can kind of overpower the storms or chase them down more easily. But uh, another thing about storms as well is that they're very good against static defense because one of the disadvantages of storms is that their rockets can miss, but they can't really miss stationary targets. They can be blocked by obstacles, but um, they are very strong 
Of course, the range has been nerfed, so it does seem like LLTs can hit them now, but it doesn't really matter. Once you have enough storms, they can take out a light laser tower in just a couple seconds. Uh, just, just one or two volleys, and uh, that will be that. So, uh, Vader doing a pretty good job. This area is is pretty secure. He's got heavy laser tower, light laser tower, working on a Punisher as well. But um, Pulsar has quite a few light laser towers here as well. But again, that won't do very much against all these storms. It's, uh, the storms will kill those light laser towers very quickly. So uh, that is why Pink has brought his army up here to delay any kind of aggression. But, you know, Pink still has not defended. This whole bottom area is pretty much open. Um, so if Vader figures that out and sends down some uh, just even, even a mediocre attack force, that could be very devastating to deal with. And uh, Pink pushing in here, uh, this is ill-advised, uh, uh, to say the least. Just, um, there's a lot of defense here. These storms can kite for a long time, and uh, maybe his goal is to take out the Punisher. But, um, I don't know. I don't know if he can do it. We'll see. This Gat is still full health. More storms coming in. Uh, there are fighters though, but that Punisher does complete in time, and uh, every shot of the Punisher is going to be absolutely devastating to this army. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know about this attack. Pink has killed most of the storms that were there originally, but uh, I don't think he's going to kill this Punisher. Maybe. Uh, he does take out the heavy laser tower. The Punisher is getting low. It is so close. And uh, he does end up taking out the Punisher. So, great job. And Orange needs more air defense. Vader clearly upset about that, losing all his defense there. But as I mentioned in previous casts, Stumpies are very good um, against the static positions because they have a lot of health and they do pretty decent damage. So, uh, Pink does break through there, and, uh, that surprises even me. I didn't think he had enough, but, uh, he, he did, and he took out that whole area, and, uh, whatever team gets all this reclaim is gonna have a pretty big advantage. Now, uh, Vader has quite a few thuds, and thuds, um, are decent, or they're very strong against static defenses, but they're not so good anymore in combat because their shells are slow and kind of inaccurate. So they're they're specifically designed as anti-structure units. And uh, Pink continuing this harassment with uh, with T1 fighters, Freedom Fighters. So uh, putting a lot of pressure on Orange all over the map and uh, Let's see, what is he on? He's on two plants here and an aircraft plant. And, uh, but now Vader is on T2. And that, uh, that is quite a problem, or it will be quite a problem for Pink. As soon as he starts pumping out those T2 units. Uh, he is building Pyros to start off. Pyros, uh, as we've mentioned in the, in the past. In previous casts, they, uh, they're fast. Uh, with their flamethrower, they can melt down most T1 units into a, into a puddle pretty quickly. But uh, Pink with this relentless pressure on the bottom left. And uh, yeah, he is doing a good job. And uh, Vader on 30 metal per second, Pulsar on 48. So uh, he is... Just looking at the map, you can see he's taken a hell of a lot more of the map. He's got more metal, quite a bit more metal, and uh, using it very effectively here. Pushing up the left side, taking out solar collectors. Um, 
taking out uh, metal extractors. But uh, even though pink has the resource advantage, orange has the tech advantage. And in Escalation, <laughs> like the mod's name, um, when you escalate, when you reach a higher technology tier than your opponent, you do get a huge advantage. Sometimes an insurmountable advantage. But of course, pink is also on air, and uh, being in the sky will give him uh, quite an advantage as well. So, we will have to see, um, but ultimately, I do feel as though... Uh, being on T2 here is huge, and those pyros are going to be extremely difficult to deal with. Like, I'm not going to mince words. Pyros are monstrous, especially early on, uh, early T2 phase. Uh, they become less useful as uh, the T2 battle progresses, but if your opponent is only on T1, as pink is, uh, they are quite devastating. But Vader still... Oh no, he does have air defense back here. It's just slow. Vader needs to get this air defense to the front. Saying uh, He's saying in the chat, What are my AA doing? Frustrated. He definitely needs to get those to the front line. And uh, these crashers will take care of these freedom fighters. There's plenty of them. Uh, Pink is going to have to retreat those freedom fighters. And uh, Pyro's now getting into the front line burning everything in their path. Holy moly. It is awesome to watch. Absolute carnage here. And uh, again, Pink is just fighting a uh, an uphill battle against this higher tech of yellow. Of, of yellow. What is this, this, this? This caster is smoking crack. Of orange? Yeah. Pulsar uh, on an uphill battle here, and uh, he really needs to get to T2 himself if he wants to stay in this game. He had a lead, and I feel like he's just throwing it away. Even though he is ahead on metal, still, he still has more surface area. You can just see that uh, with the addition of these pyros into the army, um, he just can't really keep up. Now that's one interesting thing um, people mention is that um, it's, it's a big difference between Escalation and Protea. Protea, uh, also called Venom Mod, is the other big uh, OTA mod that people play a lot. And uh, oh my god, these pyros now getting into the vehicle plant. And the, oh Man, you can just see these pyros just in a war of attrition are slowly moving the needle um, for Vader, you know, just being too much for Pink to deal with. I mean, they're just so strong against T1. They're just so strong. Like, they're everything you could want. They're fast. They have a lot of health. Um, and they, they do so much damage. When I say they have a lot of health, I mean for their cost, like cost efficiently, like metal, metal spent per, per health. Uh, it's it's very efficient. Like obviously they have less health than like a can, but um, just in terms of their cost, especially against T1, they have a lot of HP. And uh, T1 just can't really deal with. There's really not great answers on T1 for Pyros. Like I think that's all there is to it. Like Pink has to tech up here, and he finally will because once he gets to T2. This advanced K-Bot lab has plenty of options that can deal with pyros, like, super efficiently. You can go for, um, Zeus's, just crush pyros, Mavericks, even Fido's. There's so many options to deal with them. But no, in the meantime, Pink is going to, uh, commit these bombers straight into Vader's base, but, uh, oh my god, is he going for a commander snipe? Ah! Okay, here we go, here we go. Oh, 
Oh, Vader does a good job of uh, nano blocking. He throws up some buildings in the way to uh, stop those bombers, and uh, the bombers essentially accomplish nothing. They they don't do any damage at all, and uh, now with these pyros moving in. Uh, Pink will be forced to degun them. Oh man, this game's looking really bad now. And uh, it's sad because Pink was at such an advantage. He was at such an advantage uh, once he uh, took out this little Ford base of Vader's. Um, if he had, if he had teched a T2 around that time um, and built uh, the right counters, because uh, Orange was already basically at T2. But if he had started soon after him he could have stayed in the game but uh, now it's looking really it's gonna be really tough uh, Vader has now surpassed him economically so uh, you can see he's now got at least as much of the map if not more but what I was saying is that uh, one design difference between TA Escalation and Pro TA is that in Escalation, there's a huge jump, there's a huge gap or chasm in power between uh, T1 and T2, where in, um, in OTA, or uh, in ProTA, in Venom mod, um, the gap is less. So the player that techs the T2 gets an advantage, but it's not as stark of an advantage. It's not as clear of an advantage as you see here, that when a player gets a T2 in Escalation, it's a it's a massive gap between the two uh, players power I mean the pyros are just so difficult to deal with this is a good example so so for example pyros wouldn't be as strong in pro TA they would probably be better than t1 units but they wouldn't be crushing everything as we see here but this is kind of the design of escalation I mean when you jump that tech tier you do get a massive advantage I personally prefer that. Uh, it's like that in a lot of uh, other TA iterations. So I've been casting FAF games. The the jump between T1 and T2 in FAF is massive. Uh, once once a player gets a T2, they get a huge advantage in combat, and uh, just as much so for for T3. Once a once a player gets a T3 and in, in FAF, it's uh, absolutely huge. So, uh, so Pro TA does keep things uh, more close, I guess, in, in terms of the tech advantage. But I do prefer uh, Escalation's huge jump. Of course, getting to T2 isn't cheap either. So keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, you do need to be aware of when your opponent techs up. You do need to keep tabs on that and... Uh, you basically have two options if your opponent um, does tech to the next tier you either need to kill them quickly so in other words they've invested a massive amount of resources into teching up so you need to either kill them win the game or uh, start teching up yourself those are basically your two options you, you really cannot continue to fight them at a tech disadvantage over a long period of time it's just a battle you're not going to win. Uh, it's the way the game is designed. It's the reason it's called Escalation. You know, once your opponent gets that uh, evolution of technology, if you do not respond correctly, he will, uh, he or she will slowly grind you down into the dust. But uh, it's not over yet. Pulsor with two Mavericks here. And uh, Mavericks are pretty good against... Static defenses, at least T1 static defenses. But, um, yeah, I don't know if it's going to be enough. Uh, Vader potentially with just a game ending push here of Pyros and Crashers. And uh, even though these two Mavericks are continuing to uh, put the pressure on here at the top, Vader does have some Dominators to deal with those. And uh, now there is just this one Maverick left. In the meantime, Vader is doing his own push into Pink's base. And um, can the Maverick get this Geo? He he will get that. So that's uh, that's something that will that will harm uh, Orange's energy uh, energy economy. But uh, 
yeah, again, I don't, I just don't know if it's going to be enough. Uh, this push right here seems game ending. It seems like Pink just doesn't have enough to stop it. And even though that one Maverick got a lot done, I mean, you can see how strong Mavericks are. He, he just kind of blazed a path of destruction here. Takes that out. Takes this. I mean, Mavericks are strong, but just think how much stronger it would have been if he had. If he had uh, gone to T2, if Pink had gone to T2 like, uh, you know, 10 minutes ago around the time that Vader was, he'd probably be winning this game or at the very least he would have been able to uh, keep, keep on an even footing, you know, keep things close. So, uh, but now, I don't know. Another thing about, man, another thing about these pyros is that T1 units just can't keep up with them. Like, even the fastest T1 units, just can't, they just don't stand a chance. And, uh, yeah, I really feel like this game that we just watched is a case study on uh, why you cannot fight T2 with T1. It's just not really... It's not really a super efficient way of uh, trying to play the game. Like I said, you basically have two options. Once your opponent texts a T2, you can either kill them or uh, or tech up yourself. That's about it. There's, you're not going to win a war of attrition like this. And uh, Pink just can't keep up with these pyros. They're too fast. And uh, now taking out a lot of his base will probably take out this Geo. Let's see, it is at about half health. Pink committing all his resources to stopping this, this attack. But uh, that Geo in defensive mode has a lot of health. It could live, but uh, okay, it goes. And uh, yeah, pretty devastating. Now with some uh, raiders moving through the south, and uh, I think Pink at this point probably realizing it's over, he's most likely going to go suicide his commander into uh, into Orange's base. So yeah, it is pretty much over. Orange has taken out almost everything. Uh, Pink has all the production structures, most of the energy, and uh, yeah, Pink with the last two raw. Maybe get some D guns in here before he does finally tap out. It is only a matter of time. Let's see how much health this commander has. But uh, very well played by both players. Uh, Pink was definitely ahead. I mean, he had such a huge advantage over uh, over Orange. And he definitely could have won, but uh, he let Orange get that tech advantage and keep it for way too long. And uh, now he will suffer the consequences. So, guys, that was a good one. Uh, again, a close game. And uh, but man, I've been in that situation a hundred times. Uh, I've definitely had <laughs> so many. Uh, so many examples where I'm winning early on, but then my opponent texts to T2 in a 1v1 and just comes back and absolutely uh, destroys me. So, uh, yeah, that was still a good game. A uh, nice case study of uh, what happens when you try to fight T2 on T1. But um, overall, guys, like I said, we've got more games coming up, more games to cast. And uh, stay tuned this week or I guess weekend, for more content. But uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed that one, and thank you for watching.